and uh, most of the stuff I do is pretty adult, pretty filthy actually, a lot of it. So they won't watch that until they're 30, let alone 18 or 21. So it was really nice to do something that I could take them along to. But yeah. It's very confusing, like, what do you do for a living, Daddy? You know, what do you do? What's your job? They said to me today, what are you doing today? And I said, and they can't watch talk to people. Yeah. What are you talking to them about? Well, me. <laughs> That's what I really? Now yeah. yeah. yeah, they actually see what I do. It's, yeah. Yeah, they're actually yeah. part of it. Now people ask them, what do they do? And yeah, so, right. Yeah, yeah, now, welcome to my life. And yeah. Everyone just assumed they went to parties mm. and premieres. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So have they seen the film? Did they, they did. go they last night? They came yesterday. They were yeah. there yesterday. And what did they think? They loved it. Well, it, it was a big test. You know, we had a thousand people in that uh, cinema. And there's a lot of three, four, five and six-year-olds. And children are not polite and they're not, uh, you know, they won't tell you something's great if they don't like it. And I thought, well, this, you know, if the film doesn't work, they will, it'll be bedlam in here. Yeah, you'll know. And they were, the whole cinema was totally into it for the whole thing. So it's brilliant. That is brilliant. And that was the, that to me is the big, um, you know, the big test. Did they recognise your voice as Pat or they, I mean, were they, they oblivious to it? Frank kept turning to me and saying, you're postman Pat Daddy and he's my three year old and I think he was half telling me and half asking me. Because he couldn't, you know, obviously it doesn't look like me <laughs> and it doesn't really, it sort of sounds like me but I'm doing it in a bit of an accent so, you know, yeah, I think it's still a bit bewildering. It's still a bit bewildering for me to be honest. I mean, it's still a bizarre thing to do, so. There's, uh, there's a line that sort of go, goes through the film very often with people saying, I wish I was a postman. Yeah. <laughs> Do you wish you were a postman? Uh, I don't know if I'd be any good at it. I'm too much an itchy brain, you see. I I, uh, I love about acting is that I can do lots of different stuff. I can be postman Pat one day and then I can do a bit of episodes and then do a voiceover, do the radio play. And I like the mix up and I think, you know, as much as I'd like being outside and doing a route, I think I would, I, 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 I like the fact that I don't know when I'm going to be doing this time next year. You don't have a black and white cat, I tell you. I don't have a black and white cat, no. <laughs> but how did you prepare for, sort of, for the movie? I mean, did you watch all the Postman Pats from the I watched the a lot of them, yeah. you know, and I, I you know, because kids don't understand that it's a different actor. You know, they don't know that Stephen Mangan's been brought in for the movie. That no. doesn't mean anything to them. No. So they, they're going to want to see a Postman Pat that they... I mean, I don't think it has to sound identical, but I wanted to be close. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason I was chosen, because I don't sound a million miles different from the guy who does it. Um, but, you know, I wanted to bring a bit of what I do as well into it. So, yeah, I watched it deliberately to try and, you know, make him sound a little bit like the TV character. Otherwise, children would be sat there with their mouths open in horror. Yeah. It's not Postman Pat. And what did you think you brought into the character that is Stephen Mangan, Postman well, Pat? Well, uh, you know... Um, it's one of the things that you ask yourself when you get to yeah. play these iconic parts, because you think, you know, everyone's got an idea of Adrian Mole, who he should look like, or, or uh, Bertie Wooster, or <laughs> Dirk Gently. So, you know, when you, you realise that they are looking for a bit of what you bring. I try to make him as warm as I can. I try to, you know, bring elements of uh, humour in. I mean, he's probably the nicest cartoon character there is. Mm. He really is the sweetest guy. There isn't a nasty bone in his body. No. But that's not interesting for an hour and a half. So uh, it was fun to be able to play Patbot as well, you know, his evil nemesis. Um, but yeah, I tried to bring a, a bit of, you know, I think warmth and humour were the two things I tried to bring. The, the voice of the robot, was it yours or did they make... Did it was they, mine, yeah. Oh, it was yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder whether it was a bit of computer generated or no, out no. of your voice. No, 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 they didn't. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. You went Will I Am. What's that? You went Will I Am. I went a bit yeah, Will yeah, I Am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. And Con asked, um, did, are you sad that you didn't get to sing the songs? Uh, a little bit of me is sad, really? and a little oh, bit yeah. of me is relieved. Okay. I mean, Pat's supposed to have the most jaw-droppingly beautiful voice. It's supposed to be like a Susan Boyle moment. Uh, now, people might have dropped their jaws when I sang, probably for the wrong reason. I mean, I, I would love to sound that good. It's, I'm delighted that Ronan makes me sound great. <laughs> uh, some people think that that's my voice, my singing voice, and I haven't corrected them. Right. <laughs> you know, that's Your his problem. You have now. Yeah. What's that? Your children included? My children haven't, I haven't commented, actually. They probably ah. just assume that is my singing voice, so like, they won't be finding out. you show out. Boy's own concert? Yes. It's me, I'm saying. So, yeah, I'd love to have, I'd love to have had a voice that good, probably, uh, but they never actually auditioned me or asked me to sing, so... 
next time, the sequel. Well, next it. time maybe he'll do the speaking and I'll do the singing. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, Also from Ethan, who's five, how do postman, uh, how does Postman Pat get the letters out of the post box? He'd like you to answer that one. Uh, well, we have a key for the bottom of the uh, post box, which you uh, unlock a door. There's a secret door on the front because it would be quite tricky to put your arm through that uh, tiny slot and try and pull them back out. So yeah, they all fall into a sack. You open up the front with a key and take the sack away and put a new empty sack in its place. Brilliant. Um, so I was going to ask you, obviously in, in this day of superhero movies and stuff, do kids still really want to see Postman Pat? What was the kind of idea for you? I guess you could answer this because you have children. You know, with all these Iron Mans and stuff, yeah. what's the lure of Postman Pat over those films? Well, I think if you're a British kid, he's a very British character. And, uh, you know, some of the big cartoon films are amazing that are produced at the moment. And I think some of the best stuff that's been produced in any genre of art, you know. I think that some of the animated films, Frozen and Up, uh, Toy Stories, you know, they're incredible. But Postman Pat is a very British take, you know, and I think... Uh, people respond to that, to seeing red post boxes and the little vans and, you know, it's not an American series that we've, mm. we've been, you know, given second hand. Um, and kids love him. They love him and they love Jess. I mean, I think without Jess he'd be nothing, let's be honest here. <laughs> Jess really is the star of the show, I'm well aware of that. I've got, I've got no illusions about that. <laughs> uh, you know, it's... Um, but, you know, like Wallace and Gromit, for example, there's something very British about them and something very comfortable. We just talked about that. Yeah, they're yeah, very exactly. similar we you know, with, the, with this non-speaking yeah. sidekick mm. who uh, kind of really knows what's going on and sometimes <laughs> works three steps ahead. Um, yeah, so I think that's why. And I guess, like, the whole talent show theme kind of brings it to today's audience in a way yeah. who yeah. are aware of shows like X Factor. Absolutely, oh, yeah, absolutely get that whole thing. You know, kids very young of are versed in all that stuff uh, and totally understand that world. I wondered what um, what cartoon characters you grew up with. Well, Rhubarb and Custard was one of my main, mm. uh, which I haven't seen for a long time. Do you know? Mm, do you remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah the very yeah, shaky yeah, animation. Yes. I don't know whether it would be annoying now or whether oh, it would be probably yeah. probably they annoying. Would be, yes. Tom and Jerry, <coughs> yes, which my Tom kids is... still love. You know, yeah. we watch that together. And my son is seven, he loves Tom and Tom Jerry. Tom and Jerry, they love it. Classic. They? It's absolutely classic. Yeah, and they can't get enough of people being hit in the face or <laughs> bogged over the head or, you know. Um, uh, well, and all those Speedy things, Gonzalez, maybe? That's along the well, same. You know, I so. loved The Jungle Book growing up, oh. that film, and they, my boys still absolutely love yeah. that. I mean, the so would you see March, yourself you know? voicing any of those characters? Oh, absolutely. Which one? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, a Baloo, I think, probably. <laughs> <laughs> For the, the voice, the voice one. is deep, <laughs> yes. and uh, yeah. you know, he's also a slightly goofy, uh, lovable character. Yeah. You know, but some of that—I mean—that music in that film is unbelievable. It's one of the great things about this. Thank you very much. I think I enjoyed about this film as well. How many? Oh, well, this thing. How much great music there is in it. You know, there are a surprisingly large number of Postman-related songs out there, <laughs> and they're all in the movie. Or oh, Postman puns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the Postman always rings twice. Nice. Book the bedtime well, there's story. There's quite a lot of adult. Who'd have thought there'd oh, be a Russ really? Meyer, yeah. you know, yes. reference in a, in a Postman Pat film? Yeah. It's incredible. That it's is a 2001 brilliant. Space Odyssey reference. You know, there's lots <laughs> yes. of little things they sneak in there. Because films these days, you've got to make them interesting for the adults as well. Because the adults have yeah. got to go along and watch them. We just said that too. I mean, if the parents don't like the movie, they won't take the kids. They won't take the kids. That's, exactly. that's You're selling them to the parents first. And, and, and they've got to work to both. So it's an interesting... It's a really interesting thing. And with this one, I guess an awful lot of the parents will have grown up with Pat to start with. Yeah, so sure. starting off with an advantage, but a very different Pat, because obviously the animation is different. The animation yeah, is different, that's yeah. what I was going to bring up, because actually my editor, who's a father now, grew up with Postman Pat, and he was a bit outraged that it's all 3D now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. think that's a, that's a challenge to get parents to go see the film, because they're so used to this 2D? They are used to that, and in fact there's a joke in the film about that, you know, uh, Pat picks up a model and says, you know, no one's going to watch the puppets moving around. <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, that, that comes down to boring stuff like cost-effectiveness, and also mm. it's, 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 it's more to do about the emotions you can get across. You know, in a five or ten minute little Postman Pat film on telly, the fact that their faces don't really move is okay, but over an hour and a half and the trying to range of emotions you're trying to portray, it's just not going to work uh, with a character that just is just a little, literally a stuffed toy that cannot move his face. 
So, um, you know, that's, that's part of the, 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 the consideration, really. Um, Sophie, yeah. who's six, mm -hmm. wants to know, why is Jess so strong? So strong? Mm. What do you mean, physically strong? I guess so, strong? yeah. That's, why is Jess, Jess the cat, so strong? Well, I think cats are amazing animals. Because yeah. he lifts postman Pat from the that's true. yeah you're from right, the, from right. the and building, he also jumps and he says, "I'm not. I haven't yeah, put on high. any weight." He yeah, well, says, he's, a, he's, a, "He's the real superhero of the film." <laughs> I mean, uh, Pat's a humble postman, a sweet, nice man, but Jess uh, is the one with the extraordinary powers. <laughs> <laughs> and Con actually wanted to know whether Jess was really your best friend. Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> I don't know my best friend. And yours, Pat. Um, Pat couldn't survive without Jess and it's one of the heartbreaking things in the film where Jess doesn't want to get in the car with him. Um, yeah, no, they're, they are, they're inseparable. They are, you can't imagine one without the other. Yeah. If, if Jess ever retires, then Postman Pat would do as well. He wouldn't carry on without Do you actually have an animal, a pet? No, we don't. Your best friends, you don't? No, we used to have a dog, but no longer. No. We shouldn't talk about that. No. Too, too heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs> Now, obviously, episodes has opened up to a US audience. Has that led to Hollywood offers? Um, yes. Um, uh, well, you know, I did the Rush, the film Rush last year. Um, that was partly because Ron Howard uh, watched episodes and really loved it. Um, it's a very peculiar thing now. I was on Graham Norton with Barry Manilow this week, and yes. Barry Manilow <laughs> came over and started quoting episodes lines to me. And the idea that Barry Manilow knows who I am is really... I'd love to meet Barry Manilow. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Incredible. <laughs> Uh, is a really bizarre thing, but yes, it's. Um, I, I mean, the great song. thing about episodes is well, it's two months of my year, uh, so unlike doing a lot of other American shows that you know require you, really your whole. Year. My best friend Andy, mm -hmm. Andrew Lincoln's in The Walking Dead, and you know that's his whole year. Are really, you doing that? Um, episodes I love because I do two months or so, and then I get to do Postman Pat and Bertie Wooster and Rush and mm -hmm. Radio Four Books of the Week and stuff. So. It indulges my, you know, my uh, short attention span. And for all the the parents out there that are still friends of friend of fans of Friends, mm -hmm. how how has it been working with um, Matt with Madly Blanc? Yeah, he's fantastic. Is I mean, he I, is he as cool as he is? He really is. He's he, more cool as he has a joy you character. Think how cool you have to be to to do a show in which you're you know ten years you're held up to that much ridicule as well you're, absolutely you know when it's, everyone knows it's not really him but at the same time we don't know series, actually well, yeah, maybe you don't <laughs> we don't there's lots of jokes about him being too fat and too old and past it you know and you've got to have a pretty good sense of humor about yourself and i can't think that uh, you know there are many actors that would do that so it just shows what a you know a sort of good guy he is. I mean, I'm going to go into no at some stage. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm yeah. not. That. Is that anything he's ruled out? No, it's it, almost the opposite. He'll he'll pitch ideas to the writers. And oh, they'll go, no, Matt, they'll protect him more than he wants to protect oh, really? himself. Yeah, <laughs> they'll say no. We can't write that about you. Um, so, you know, I thought when I took that job that my the job would be managing him. You know, he's so famous and so rich. Exactly. And he'd be a monster. I couldn't be further from the truth. He's, you know, he doesn't take himself seriously, but he takes the work really seriously. So, I've really lucked out there. It's a brilliant relationship, actually, the three of you. I love it. Yes, show. absolutely. It's Thank you. It really is good. Oh, it's great fun to do. Stephen, the whole first series of, of episodes, you know, centers on a US remake of a British show. What's your opinion on that whole thing? I guess we can kind of see a bit of that. In what episode. remaking shows? Yeah, remaking, you know. British shows. Well, it's one of our best exports. I mean, there's so many mm -hmm. British shows get remade and a lot of them don't ever actually get pilots made, never get shown. Um, you know, it just shows what talent we have in this country for generating ideas. And, you know, it's hard because there's been so much TV. You know, 20 years ago, TV was relatively in its infancy. You know, nowadays, there's so much produced. It's harder and harder to come up with something original and interesting. And um, I think, you know, I think sometimes it works really well when shows are remade. Sometimes it's a total disaster. Um, I mean, I did a show called Free Agents, which was over here, and, and then went over there and was remade and didn't really work. Um, I don't know. It, you know, it's sort of flattering to this country and to the talent we have here that you know the Americans uh, remake some, especially comedies. 
Uh, but then, you know, they're producing, and we're remaking all those Scandinavian <laughs> True. Dark <laughs> dramas, aren't we? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's gone to them. Do you have, uh, this is from Sophie, um, she's six years old. Do you have any of these toys? Uh, do you know what? We have this at home. In fact, um, there you go. Um, uh, my son, uh, Frank, now sleeps with him, uh, you know, uh, every night. He's, he's almost, but not quite, uh, supplanted Mr. T, who's his tiger. Um, but uh, I, don't have a, I don't have a pat because... Oh, you should get one, they're good. Because I'm Postman Pat. So you just wear the costume <laughs> and you get... like looking in a mirror. Did you know, and I was saying this last night, that is the first time they've ever released a plush version of Jess. Is it really? Which I didn't realise until, because they obviously supplied it for the kids to review it. Right. And, um, yeah, it's the first time they ever did it. How did it go down? Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like it's, I, can't, I think it's crazy that they've never... I know, it's weird, isn't one. it? I know. The yeah, good I think thing Jess's time will come. This is this is his breakthrough performance. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about the but they tried to do like a, a Jess um, sort of series, but it didn't really pick up. Did they do a Jess? They series? did. They did. I saw like a little sort of screening in a in a CD on a DVD. Oh really? But it didn't really pick up. Well, I mean, without they're, Postman Pat. They're a double act. There's a double mm -hmm. act. But all great yes. double acts don't work, you know, when, on their own. That's the. the they're greater than the sum of their parts. Well, you can have yeah. chips without fish, but you can't have fish without chips. Yeah, it's true. True. Like postman pat on his own also yeah. wouldn't you work. You couldn't have Laurel without Hardy. <laughs> you know, you couldn't have Morecambe without Wise. No. So <laughs> you got some. Yeah. And what do you think about? <laughs> Last the question. Okay. okay. So what's so what's coming up next? Because obviously you've had a very busy time. Yeah. What's next? Well, I've just got out of the play, so I'm sort of relishing having my evenings back again. Um, I've got a few things going on, but the only thing I can really tell you about is the next series of episodes, which films at the end of July. Uh, Number four. Series four. Four. Yeah. So we're all waiting with bated breath to see what they'll do with the characters, because I know it starts, you know, a couple of hours after the end of the last series. So, um, uh, I, I, you know, I know where that left us. So it's, I'm wondering how they're gonna, you know, what pull a rabbit out of the hat and how they're going to get us <laughs> back together again. Um, I'm not giving anything away there, just you know, no. get, get it all working together again. So we'll see. So uh, yeah, that's, that's summer and I've got, I'm doing a bit of writing at the moment. I've 